Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at some of the rendering parameters that are built within Marmoset Toolbag. Marmoset Toolbag is a great little program that simulates what your low res mesh might look like in a game. It allows for normal maps, spec maps, you can even add lights. We can create a 360 degree rotation. It's just a great program. It's one of those programs that I always recommend to my students. And I love to actually take a model once I'm done. I drop it into Marmoset, set up a few lights, uh, some of the rendering shots. It helps to give you a really good idea how your model is looking. So I, I just love Marmoset Toolbag. So let's go ahead and jump right into things. Okay, first thing is, obviously I've got this model, this Lord of the Rings tr troll. It's a similar troll. It's obviously not exactly the same Lord of the Rings troll. It's just similar to. Uh, we have this particular model in. It's got some armoring, got some chains, got an axe, has a base, even has basic lighting in it. We're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the material palette, which is just clicking this little tab here. This is how you navigate through the different palettes. In the material palette, as you can see, the axe posed, if I click on it, it briefly illuminates so we know what model that was. If I click the armor, it switches to the armor material, as you can see. If I click troll body, it switches to the troll material and the ground it switches to the ground material. Now the ground actually has a bit of an alpha on it that's why it fades out at the edges. Uh, make sure you've got all of these squared away before you get into any of this because otherwise you're going to get some really odd renders so make sure that each particular piece of your model has the proper materials saved to it. For the ground however we, we there was a little bit of lava in here but obviously it's not very red and it's certainly not glowing any but that's because we actually haven't put a an emissive or a glow map on this particular area so I just did one really quickly so if you click this button here emissive we'll grab this particular one that says ground dias E for emissive okay make sure we please make sure you're on the ground material when you do this or your particular alpha when you do this that were whatever needs an emissive make sure you're on the proper material if you drop the emissive on the axe for instance well it glows on the axe but obviously it's glowing based on what this map is going to be here and, and we don't obviously want to glow on the axe so we want to go ahead and clear this make sure you select in this case the ground material and we're going to go ahead and turn on the intensity. Now, as you can see, this does start to make this stuff glow really nicely. I'm just going to go ahead and crank it up. And there we go. We have a nice glow map on it. Gives it a little something, a little more pep to the, the scene. and makes it a little more interesting. By the way, if you actually want to see what the glow map looks like, you can click this little P, and this gives you a preview. This is what the actual glow map look like. In fact, you can do that with any of your textures here with the, the ground. You select that out. This is what the ground texture look like. This is a very old model. I use this a lot of times uh, in class when I'm teaching students because it's a fun model for them to get to play with, to design their own trolls with their own bases. They actually sculpt in a bunch of different rocks and things like that, and then they get to play with their particular weapons. But this is the model I, I use for my own purposes, especially for instruction. Okay, so we've got the glow map in, so we'll go ahead and leave that there. Let's go to the output. You want to make sure what, that you set up uh, where you want your renders to be, if you're going to do a 360 or just screenshots from it. So you want to click that button and then set up wherever, you're, wherever you want your particular folder to be. Mine actually has a renders folder. Uh, a couple things you want to know with your screenshot right here. If you want to, if you want your screen to capture basically the view you see, you want to make sure that this enlargement says none. If you want this to be something that's going to be high resolution, you want to make sure it captures a very large size. If you merely left click and hold, you'll see that you now see the 2x, 3x, 4x, or 5x. Basically, that's two times the size, three times, four times, five times. Okay, it, usually for, for most of my renders, none works fine, but I can see where a lot of people will go up 
twice as much or sometimes as three three times as much okay so we'll go ahead and just leave that as a default for now what we're trying to show you is to use as much default as possible because marmoset is pretty good at just the default settings so i try to use that wherever possible for the 360 degree shot uh this says what's the image count well right now it's the default is 32 if it's 30 frames a second and you want to say 10 seconds then obviously you want to crank this up to say 300 that would give you 10 seconds and you can decide if you want clockwise or counterclockwise when it does rotation around etc we're not going to actually render out that particular uh, part of it the the animation the rotation around but that's one way to go ahead and do it by the way I'm rotating by holding down my alt and left mouse okay if I hold my right alt I can zoom in and zoom out if I hold my middle mouse and alt I can pan around okay it's the same controls as Maya my users will really enjoy that I'm sure again so we've got our material set up we want to make sure we save the mesh and materials let's go to our view right now we have a basic background color you can change this very easily by merely clicking the button and then as you can see I'm just scrolling through I can change it to blue do something really really bright a little too bright I actually prefer kind of a grayscale background uh, I find the models tend to stand out better that way but you guys can use whatever you want for that uh, you can actually put in a background image I'm not going to in this one but if you click this button obviously you can navigate to wherever you have a background image if you wanted one uh, you can set up uh, the mesh turntable actually if, if I just move it slightly this way you can see where it starts to turn around and it'll rotate this is this is the speed at which it rotates okay I'm just gonna set that back down to zero because we're not going to worry about that at this point for the rotation you can actually make the sky rotate around. Let's say we'll just do it real quickly. And there's the, the, the sun, the sky, will be rotating around your model. So if you rendered this out, you'd see how, how it affects everything on your model with just the shadows. Okay, I'll just go ahead and clear that. And we're going to readjust some lighting anyway, so don't worry about that. And you can also do the same with your camera and make it rotate around. I'm not going to for this, but you can. You can turn on your wireframe on your model with this button right here, wireframe. You can also outline it. If I turn off the wireframe and outline, you can see what outline does is it's basically outlining all the major features. If I turn that off and turn on wireframe, you can see it will show it, everything in a tessellated wireframe mode. You can actually adjust the color right here with wireframe color. You can actually stick it to white if you wanted. It's kind of harsh. Could turn it to solid black if you wanted. You can also fade the strength on this. You see this here, right? What wireframe strength? You can actually, you know, make it really dense or make it kind of light, so you can still see your model and yet still see that it's wireframe. And if you were showing this off to potential um, employers, you can show that it's very low poly. And they'd probably really enjoy that. I'm going to go ahead and turn that one off. Uh, this actually already has a floor, this particular base to it. But if this model didn't, you could just click on the floor button and it would actually create some shadowing for you, some basic shadowing in a kind of grayscale mode. For the light, we have a pine forest right now, the sky setting. You can actually just left click and hold and you can see all the different parameters and there are a lot of them to go through. Right now it's on the pine forest. I'm just going to adjust the sky rotation and all you have to do is click and hold this slider you can actually adjust the lighting but we're going to actually add in a couple of lights so right here is this add light button I'm just going to click it you get a default light right here if I rotate the model around you can see that it's positioned into a default and it has an actual kind of a pink light to it so I can now just left click hold and drag and move that around click and drag it and move it around I can basically position it where I think it's going to benefit the model the most in this case I'll actually pull it towards the front a little bit I want some of that pinking in on the skin 
but I also want to turn down the intensity. It's a little bright, so I'm just going to adjust the intensity a little bit here. I'm going to add in another light. This is a green, comes in as a default. I'm going to position that so it's more over here, just to give it a little lighting. There we go. And I'm also going to change the intensity on that a little bit. Doesn't look like I'm doing a lot with that, but I actually am. It's actually lending in a lot of color into that. I can click on either one of these at any time, of course, and change things. If I wanted to pull the intensity up a little bit on the pink, I could do that. Uh, I'm going to add another light. This one I'm going to pull down and underneath the model. I'm going to actually kind of locate it where the lava is showing, basically. More or less. I'll just pull it down a little bit there. And I'm going to change the color very simply by clicking on this little color box. I'll change it to a nice red. I want it to be kind of an intense red. I'm also going to adjust this up a little bit. Okay. All right. I want to angle. Uh, as you can see, the, the plane is a little bit slanted in one direction. So I'm going to hold down my control and I'm going to left click and hold outside of this ring so I can adjust the, the view of the model a little bit. Okay. So that's actually kind of a nice look. Again, this is very quick, very basic, just to get a, an idea of what's going on with that. If I click on the render tab here, I can actually set up my field of view. Right now the camera is set at 60. Obviously if I adjust that I can scale, you know, scale it way down. I can scale it in. Uh, I'm just going to go back to 60. This bokeh, uh, you can actually adjust uh, the, get that nice hazing, that slightly out of focus kind of look to a model by adjusting the bokeh size and then adjusting the focal distance and where your focus is going to end up being. And you can also adjust, adjust the focus field depth, or you can just click autofocus, and that'll autofocus everything very nicely. You can click autofocus again, and you can adjust this down a little bit. So, pretty simple. With the output, by the way, uh, if you click on the output tab, e your save shot, your screenshot is this, F12. You can either click that button or literally just click F12. And everywhere I position and hit F12, it's going to take a screenshot of that. I'll zoom in a little bit, hit F12, okay? Now, you can include the tool bag logo if you want. You include the UI in this shot. If you if those are unchecked, then you're getting just uh, this particular model or this particular view with a uh, gray background. Let me show you what this is going to look like in Photoshop. Okay, in Photoshop, I'm just going to click. These are the sc three screenshots I took. All right, so there we go. This was the latest one. The really great thing about this is it actually when Marmoset gives you the shots it actually comes with a built-in uh, alpha channel so I just have to click load selection leave it as alpha 1 and hit OK and it actually selects that right out even gets the edges etc and that's on each one of them so it makes it really user-friendly and this is something that I recommend to all my students one of the, the programs because it's just a wonderful wonderful program get you a really good idea, you make some really dramatic shots, really dramatic lighting, and again you can render everything out as a, a movie as well if you wish. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching 3dmotive.com and my name is Stephen G. Wells. Thank you.